Hi, my name's Darren Jordan, and I'm one of the partners in the North American team at Mark Kingston Smith. Our focus is to help and support North American businesses manage their UK interests. My approach and that of my colleagues is to take great care uh, to know and understand uh, what the client's priorities and their needs are so that we can provide a proactive and forward-thinking service. Usually one of our North American team is in market at any one time. However, with COVID and for the foreseeable future, our visits will be virtual. Now, whilst the UK recorded a drop in GDP of 20% in April and May 2020, the highest on record, early indications as of July are that business activity is returning quicker than many expected and business confidence is improving and expectations of business is increasing, although the position is fragile. During lockdown, the North American team have been busy. Uh, we have been doing the usual annual audits, accounting and tax compliance work. But in addition to that, we have had a number of ad hoc projects, most of which I have been involved with. Uh, a couple of the projects have been selling UK businesses to North American buyers. Uh, we have been restructuring a, a group's worldwide R&D activities um, from a US business into a new UK company, which is allowing the group to enjoy significantly larger tax credits that are available here in the UK. We've also been doing um, some transfer pricing studies and advice on international trade. Uh, we have been restructuring um, the tax affairs of uh, various people who are moving uh, from the US to the UK. And then lastly, we do have uh, some North American businesses looking to set up their first international office um, outside of the US, um, which is often in the UK. Again, taking time to listen to clients' concerns, uh, what their priorities are and what their needs are, so that again, uh, we and I can provide a proactive and forward-looking service uh, usually makes this as pain and stress-free as is possible. Anyway, that gives you a quick flavour for what the North American team have been doing during lockdown. And uh, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Mike Hayes, a senior tax partner, um, who will then be followed by Richard Cummings, the head of our HR consultancy. Uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Many thanks. Thank you, Darren. In the UK, in spite of the pandemic, tax consultancy advice is still heavily in demand, particularly for cross-border matters. So here's a few things that we are actually advising on uh, at the moment. On the domestic front, we are addressing uh, a number of the government schemes to support employment during the pandemic, in particular the the coronavirus job retention scheme. We're helping clients with their applications for this. Also, the government have announced a number of ways in which businesses and individuals can defer their tax. Some of these are automatic, which requires little work on behalf of the taxpayer, but some of these require negotiating a payment plan with HMRC, and we help clients with those. Another consequence of the pandemic is that we are looking at situations where individuals may have become trapped in a particular country because they're unable to travel as a result of the pandemic. So the issues that we have been considering is, does this affect their personal tax residence? If they're still working for their company, um, does working in a different country open them, the business up to the risk of having a taxable presence there? If they're directors of the company and they're running the business from a different country, does this affect the tax residents of the company? And finally, if a company or a group of companies has changed the way it operates during the pandemic, 
does that actually affect their transfer pricing arrangements and policies? So those are the sorts of things that we're considering. And then finally, um, during the pandemic, as everyone would appreciate, cash is king. So government incentives, which have been in place long before the pandemic, which give tax credits for particular types of business, are something that we are making sure clients are fully aware of and taking advantage. So research and development is the major one where there are generous tax credits for companies involved in R&D work in the UK. But there are a range of others, mainly in the creative sectors for film, TV, animation and video production. We've been helping clients take advantage of those, particularly at this time when cash is really important. Now I'd like to hand over to Richard Cumming, who heads up our HR consultancy service. Thanks very much, Mike. Um, I was going to talk about the new normal, and I'm assuming that the new normal in the UK is going to be very similar to the new normal in the States. The fact is that people are either working from home or they're working in the office. If they're working from home, uh, the how you define what work looks like, and you can no longer micromanage because it's quite difficult. So how do you put in management processes? That's something that uh, all of our clients are concerned considering at the moment and we're working with them very closely um, and also those that are working in the office obviously there's going to be some changes uh, start times how they do their job in the office how they take their lunches how facilities can help all that kind of stuff is all part of what's going to be normal at least for the next 12 months we anticipate beyond that uh, we have really shaped the future and we think most people probably if they can are going to continue working from home and we don't anticipate meetings to continue in the same way we think a lot more stuff is going to be done virtually that also creates opportunities because it saves travel time it also means that actually you don't need to meet sales people because uh, they're able to spend their time more effectively okay the other thing is redundancy so as part of the new normal there are roles that are either you don't need the roles anymore so think about receptionists secretaries and um, facilities for example but there's also going to be diminishing team sizes as well not only is the the economy shrinking unfortunately over this period of time but also as i said you may not need as many sales people as you had before in the uk you can't fire at will unless people have got less than two years service and even then it comes with some restrictions if anyone's got over two years service you must go through a redundancy criteria a redundancy is a consultation so it is a period of time where you can talk to your employees say that either the team numbers are reducing or the role is, is no longer required and you have a period of time where you consult. If you have less than 20 employees, that period of time can be as little as two weeks. If you have over 100 employees, it could be 45 days. If you have over 100 employees, well actually if you have over, uh, over 20 employees, you have to either elect reps from the staff that are being made redundant or use a union. And if you do that, the consultation period of either 30 days or 45 doesn't start until you've been through that process. There is a lot to consider when you do it and you cannot uh, breach this uh, UK legislation. Failure to consult is the one thing that will end you in a employment tribunal. And then once you've got failure to consult, you'll have unfair dismissal and a whole load of other stuff as well. It can be very, very costly to get it wrong. So we always advise that you take advice. And if you want to diminish roles, then you say from the outset, we are considering making some redundancies and then you'll get the advice that you need. Hopefully that's given you a, a quick overview. Um, but obviously the team are here to support you and your clients if you need us. Thanks very much.